Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm Dominique Baptiste, and I want to thank you for joining me here on Biblical Essentials for Life Bible Study Channel. We have dedicated this channel exclusively to the teaching of the Bible studies that are on Monday night for um, the Biblical Essentials Ministries and Friends. So in this particular study, we're talking about the wondrous name of Jesus. And just to be clear, Bible study is live on Monday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 p.m. Pacific Time. So for those who are able to catch us live, we do appreciate that you actually take out the time to support the ministry and to, to absorb this word because the word of God is good. You know, it blesses me richly and profoundly as God just unveils and reveals who he is to me and to you and to even get the feedback that we get from the ministry. Um, it's surprising to me sometimes the, the revelations that people are getting from this word and, and it's just awesome to see how God is revealing himself at so many different levels in the hearts of his children. So as we discussed the wondrous name of Jesus, last week we talked about the, the, the deity of his name, and his name is Yehoshua, meaning Yehovah saves, or, you know, as we say from the Greek, Joshua saves, and even in the Greek that, is in, that we also have adapted to the English, Jesus saves, praise God, and it just, it, it's very, um, it is, Jesus is, is the true personification of his name, meaning his name is alive and it has power and that power is revealed through every time we use his name. To this particular Bible study that we had on last evening was the, uh, the exalted name of Jesus. And our key scripture for that passage came out of Philippians 2 and verse 9. I'm just going to go ahead and read it. And it says, And having fashioned a man, having been fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. This is speaking of Jesus. Verse 9, it says, Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of the things in the heaven, of the things in the earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, as we talk about the exaltedness of his name, I think we have to look at at how God has even treated, the Father has even treated his own name. And so if we go back into the Word and we go back to Moses asking Jesus, asking the Father, he's like, well, who shall I say sent me? What name are you using today? Are you Je Jehovah who sets his people free? Or are you Jehovah Nisi or Jehovah Rapha or Jehovah... Shalom, who, who should I say sent me? And when God gave him the very first time that this was used, he said, tell him I am. Which is to say, I am God, right? Um, and, and the awesome thing about that is that God gave himself a name, which is the I am. I am God. I am the sole existent one. If we look at the Hebrew interpretation of that, it says, Ani Anoki, which is to say, I am the, I am the cause and I am the effect. I made it happen, and then I, you know, I'm the one that triggers the the cause, the catalyst, and then I am the effect. I am what you see that happens. And likewise, when he gave Jesus his name, he told us that his name is Emmanuel. He said that his name is, um, but then when it came time to actually name him, he said, now name him specifically Jesus. Every time someone calls his name, they are to call the name Jesus. Now the power that's in that name and what makes it the exalted name is this, is that the name of Jesus carries power. It carries strength. It carries glory. You know, the Father in the Old Testament says that in the Old Testament in the commandments he said, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Likewise with the name of Jesus. With the name of Jesus, Jesus being the Word, praise God, and his name actually is Word, a Word, or the Word, then we have to take a look at the Word and, and get an understanding of when God gave him a name that was above every name, 
-hmm. What was the true impact of that name? Why is that name exalted above all? If we go back to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, and then the subsequent verse thereof, as it relates to creation, what we see is the Word of God. It says in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were created by Him, and it was not anything made that was made. He made everything, basically. And so, when we speak about the Word of God, and we look in Genesis chapter 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it says, and He spoke, and He said, Let there be light. So God's creative power was his word. So when God said, let there be light or light be, what happened? The word got busy because the words that came out of the mouth of God were let there be light. Then the word had to make it happen. God's power was in his word. And so every time he spoke, let there be light, boom, the word went to work. Jesus showed up and did his job. He was himself. He was the active power of God. When we talk about God communing with Adam, how did he commune with him? He was the voice that walked with God, that walked in the garden in the cool of the day. It was what? The word of God speaking to Adam. So now we see the word once again. And this word is the name the Lord is Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so the power that's in his name, we still see it in the New Testament. They said, we're looking for the one named Jesus. And he turned around and said to the soldiers, I am he. And what happened? They fell back. They almost fell out. Why? Because the, the name himself, when they said, we're looking for Jesus, he said, I am. So he ties the, the fact that he is the word of God. He has been with God. And he was God since the beginning to now the I am nature of God. And so when he's asked, where, where are you? He says, I am. I am he who you look for. Now, also we see the power that's in his name. When, the, when um, Peter and James were exiting the, in the book of Acts, they're, they're, leaving this, they're going to the temple or leaving the temple. And the, um, there's a gentleman sitting there and he's asking alms. And he can't walk. And he says to he says to Peter and, and John, or Peter, yeah, I think it's Peter and John, that um, he says to them, you know, give me alms, give me alms. And it's Peter and John, praise God. And he says, give me alms. And Peter says to him, you know, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and walk. Where's the power? The power is not in not Peter. Peter is a human being, just like you and me. But the power is where? It's in the it's in the name. Jesus told us, He said, Whatever you ask in my name, the Father will do it. He said, Anything that you ask of my Father, He will in my name, He will do. What's the key? To getting things, to getting your blessing. What's the key to seeing the fulfilling of your purpose? The name of Jesus. Asking in the exalted name. See, God gave Jesus a name that was exalted, lifted up above every other name. You can stand outside the doors of heaven and you can scream, let me in in the name of my grandmother. Let me in in the name of my grandfather. Let me in the name of Archbishop and, and Bishop and Apostle and Anybody else you want to, but there's only one key to that door, and that key is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me in in the name of Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Most High God. Father, and the door would open. This is our key. We're looking for so many keys and so many triggers to getting things and having things for ourselves. And the reality is this. Excuse me. <coughs> I'm sorry, we're live. So, we're looking for to get so many things from God, and the truth is the key to releasing all the blessings of heaven, all of the gifts of God, the power, the healing power, the delivering power, the life-changing power is in the name of Jesus. 
Let's go over to the book of Isaiah, and we're going to go to Isaiah 61. <clears throat> Jesus said what? In Isaiah 61, it's a very familiar passage, and it's a passage that we love and we hold dear, because it's where Jesus himself recognized, he said, this is who I am. He said, for those of you who are wondering, this is who I am. And he says this, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prisons to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort <clears throat> all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and that he might be glorified. See, when we talk about the name of Jesus, this is what we're saying. Jesus' name bring, brought good tidings to the meek. Praise God. Jesus' name came to heal the brokenhearted. If, you, if your heart's broken, Jesus can heal you. And not only that, when you pour in the oil and the wine of his name, and you pour in the Jesus, you said that you're, you're, you're wonderful, you're counselor, you're mighty God, you're everlasting father, you're prince of peace. God, I need a wonderful thing. I need a miracle. God, I need counselor. I need you to come and I need you to work out my, my, my pain, my hurt what's going on in my heart. All of this is in his name. Praise God. I, and his name is what? His name is who he is. It's the power of God. It is the word of God. So when we talk about the name of Jesus and oh, you know, how glorious and, 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 and the, the spoken word every time his name is spoken, you have to remember that when we speak his name, we speak his word. And when we speak his word, we speak what the voice of God is saying. Jesus came to bring good tidings to the meek. If you look in the Beatitudes, what he said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Praise God. He came to bind up the brokenhearted. Those that are broken, he's come to make those to fill up to fill those cracks and to make your heart whole again through his word, through letting you know that you have this unconditional acceptance, that you have this unconditional love, that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, he condemns. Praise God. You condemn it, and he condemns it. Praise God. He came to, to proclaim, to speak the word to the captives, and to, that sets them at liberty whether they're bound either physically or bound emotionally. God's word sets our spirit free. For indeed, to know the truth, and you will be made free. Praise God. He came to proclaim the opening of prisons to them that are bound, those who are bound in the spirit and, and in the prison of their mind, to bring liberty to their spirit through his word, through his name. Why through his word? And through his name, because Jesus' name is the word of God. In his name is, is, is encompassed everything that we have need of. He said in his name, he came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort them that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of mourning for the gar the oil of joy for the gar for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called, that we may be called, the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and what? That the Father may be glorified. Now, when we think about the name, and we think about what all his name does, Scripture tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run in and are safe. So, if you're brokenhearted, run to the name, run to the word. Run to asking the Father anything in the name of Jesus, and you shall receive it. If you are captive, if you're depressed, if you're oppressed, I've not, if you can't sleep at night, <laughs> you know, and, and you pray and you know that it's, it's not God that's keeping you up, and it's not something physical or chemical that's keeping you up, 
But it's the thoughts that are racing through your mind all day, and you can't leave all that with God and get a good night rest, then you're being held captive. You're bound. You need deliverance. And that deliverance comes how? In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Think about it. When his disciples went out, when he sent them out in by the 70s, in two by two, when he sent them out, he sent them out and he said, these works that I do, you go do. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. Do the work that I do. He even told us that we would do greater works than him. So, in order to do the greater work, how do we do those? We do it all in the name of Jesus. You know, I'm not here to, I, I did receive an email, someone made a comment about it, it's like, oh, well, you know, what about baptism? Look, the word says do it all in the name of Jesus. If, if you see something different, do what you have a revelation to do. But I encourage you to follow the first century church and the apostles, and when the apostle Peter, Peter baptized people, when they prayed for people, and when everything that they did, they did in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they did it that way because they fully understood that the name of Jesus was highly exalted above every name. Even the Father himself did not take offense. The Father said, you know, go back to Philippians chapter 2, verse 9. He said, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every, of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. It says, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. God is the one, the Father is the one who put that all in place. He said, remember when the, the dove hovered down on Jesus? He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. When upon the mountain of transfiguration, he told Peter and James and John while they were standing there, he said, this is my son, my beloved son, hear him. It's like, don't look back to the Old Testament for your direction any longer. The all of your direction comes from Jesus. Jesus didn't come to throw out the law. But he was the completion of the law. They were looking for a Messiah, and the Messiah came, and his name is Jesus. Praise God. And in addition to that, he came not only to redeem the Jews, but he came to redeem all of mankind, both you and all of us. And we're all saved, and we're all kept, and we're all, we will all be lifted up with him in eternity in the name of Jesus. As Christians, remember, they first they were first called Christians at Antioch because they looked like, they act like, and they spoke like the Messiah, like Jesus Christ, the Anointed One and His Anointed. So when we think about the exalted name of Jesus, remember, it's the Father who gave Him that name. Jehovah saves. That's what His name means. Isn't it beautiful? Yehoshua. And He gave Him that name. And he said, now, at the sound of this name, at the mention of this name, broken bodies will be healed, broken hearts will be healed, broken minds and spirits will be restored, praise God, souls will be delivered, souls will be saved, and everything and everyone in the world, in the universe, in everything that's above the earth, beneath the earth, and on the earth, will know that this is my son. And it will all be to the glory of the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other name given under heaven whereby man can be saved except that of the Lord Jesus. God bless. Have a great day. And thank you for joining me here on Biblical Essentials for Life Bible Study Channel. Oh, and join, don't forget, join our Facebook Bible study group family. Talk to you later. God bless.